My name is Jody Albert Moss, and these are readings from my book, The Time Is Now. Starting with the back cover. Jody shares intimate details of his life experiences that have shaped him and his view of the world. He will take you through life challenges and epiphanies that he hopes the reader will feel familiar with and be able to relate to on some level. Jody has been driven by a strong desire to understand the spiritual side of his existence. In this book, he shares details from his early years in which he tried to fit into the conventional system of life to later years when he'd be driven to design and build never-before-seen Arcturian crystal devices. He shares with you his journey of waking up, a journey of remembering. Through learning to listen to his intuitive voice, he was guided to experience crop circles, crystals, sweat lodges, and he realized his Arcturian connection. He also shares simple exercises that will guide you to have similar experiences. While writing this book, many have shared with Jody similar experiences. Jody's desire is that this book will provide a wow moment, a time when you, the reader, will take a breath and know that you are not alone. Many are having spiritual awakenings, and the time is now to listen, acknowledge, and act. This book was created through the same energetic process as when Jody constructed the Arcturian crystal devices. You are reading this because there is something here for you. The time is now. Acknowledgement. I would like to dedicate this book to my wife Catherine and daughter Abigail. Without their continued support and assistance, this book would not have been possible. Introduction For much of my life, I've had a deep inner feeling that there was something important I needed to share. However, that deep inner feeling has been very elusive and challenging for me to understand, let alone try to explain it to others. What began to come to light while speaking with others about life, its ups and downs, trials and tribulations, was that there seemed to be some common ground. We were experiencing similar situations, but they were described using different terminology. With myself being spiritually minded and having some very spiritual wow moments throughout my life, I concluded that others were most likely having similar wow moments and may not even realize it. When I speak with people, I am able to get them to open up and share their experiences that they may not normally discuss with others. When they discover I have had similar experiences, the doors are flung wide open and our conversations just get better. Many of these people, like myself, were older, in their 50s and 60s. We've all heard of the Rainbow and Indigo children. Well, there were the ones that came before them, the ones who were born in the late 1940s and the 1950s. I fall into this time frame. We were real groundbreakers because there was little or no support for us. Often we were forced to live lives we were not intended to live. There are many of us older light beings, light workers, whatever you want to call us, all around the world, and we are here to support the ones who have come after us. We are here so that the ones that follow don't have to endure the trials and tribulations we did. We set the foundation and are here to support you as the world moves forward into the new energies. You must stand and be lights for the ones who will come after you. The time is now. It's okay to be us. It's okay to see and know things maybe others don't understand yet. Now is the time to be us, to live the life we came here to live. All of us, no matter what our age or position in life, 
must stand and live the life we incarnated here to live. The time is now. This is why at this time in my life I've decided to share my experiences with you so you may become aware of the commonality. Experiences will start happening more often and with greater intensity as we move through the new energies of the present and the future. Know that you are not alone. Be around happy, positive people and environments. It is my wish that by sharing my life in this book, you will say to yourself, Wow, all is how it should be. This is my first book, and there have been challenges. However, I am not only sharing my story, but I have included instructions on how to have experiences like I have had. Simple and informative. Take the steps which will bring you closer to understanding you. As we learn more about ourselves, we help the world. It's as simple as that. If you are reading this now, on some level you feel that the energies have spoken to you and you have responded by picking up this book. The time is now to awaken to who we really are and live the life we were meant to live. Walk with me now as I share with you. Chapter 1. A New Endeavor It was an early Friday morning as we loaded up the pickup truck with the various products which we sold to the public. We loaded plastic bins full of quartz crystals, gemstones, candle holders, and small stone basins, which I had made to be used as incense burners. My wife Catherine and I both worked full-time. However, we also run a small metaphysical store in our home that is open mainly on weekends. We had heard from our friend about a show in Brantford, Ontario. She had been a vendor there the previous year and thought that we would be a good fit. We were really uncertain as every new decision takes some thought and this show would be our first. So we really didn't know what to expect. Catherine and I had talked it over and decided to register as vendors with the show, and before we knew it, we found ourselves loading up the truck and heading for the event, hoping it would be very good for us. Once everything was loaded, we headed out. Catherine, our daughter Abigail, and I embarked on the one-hour drive to our destination. Leaving Milton, Ontario, we drove south, heading for Oakville, where we would get onto the QEW the Queen Elizabeth Way, and then go west to Brantford. It was a clear day, and the sun was already climbing in the sky, even at this early hour. Off to the west, and visibly reaching for the sky, were Rattlesnake Point and Mount Nemo. They were parts of the Niagara Escarpment, which had drawn on my subconscious mind for many years now, and have enticed me with their secrets and mysteries over the years. As our drive took us farther south down Regional Road 25, I looked to the west where I could make out the area which was in the shadow of Mount Nemo's east face. This is where the Burlington, Ontario Air Park is, a small but very busy local airport. Pointing this area out to my wife, I shared with her the information that many Unidentified sightings of flying craft had been reported there, something she had never heard about. I find this common with a lot of people. Most never think to look in their own communities and surrounding areas for unexplained events. My experience has shown me that most communities have stories that the locals don't talk about unexplained events or sightings they would sooner keep private but their stories exist needless to say i am finding that the toronto oakville and hamilton areas in ontario seem to have more hidden stories to share you just have to ask the right people and keep looking we had taken the exit and were now heading west on the qew which was the major highway that would eventually get us to our destination in Brantford. 
This part of the highway is located on the north shore of Lake Ontario, a lake with many stories and mysteries of its own. Over the years, stories of the mysterious happenings which have occurred around the Lake Ontario area are often shared and they present a common theme. The Great Lakes Triangle. A triangle much like the well-known Bermuda Triangle, where boats and planes have gone missing over the years. As we headed west, we passed an area where a magnetic hill is located. For those of you who have never heard of a magnetic hill, if you put your car in neutral at the bottom of the hill and turn it off, your car will roll uphill. Again, this is a location adding to the hidden mysteries of this part of Ontario. Westward, we traveled along the QEW and just past Burlington, the highway veered to the left and through an area known as the Hamilton Bay. An area known as Princess Point was to the west of us. This is an area with water and land, a place where people go hiking and have picnics. This is a spot where Indian artifacts have been found and studied, adding to the very important part of this area's history. As the highway took a turn around West Hamilton, we started our climb up the Niagara Escarpment. It is a long gradual climb up the highway, which had been cut into the side of the mountain many years ago. They constructed this highway when I was young. I remember when it was all untouched wilderness and the sadness I felt when the construction started many years ago. As we drove up the escarpment, I shared the stories of my childhood when I lived in West Hamilton, just below this highway. I had numerous fun times exploring the wilderness of this area. At the top of the mountain, the QEW turned south and headed towards Brantford, where our event was being held, and as we headed south, we entered the region of the Grand River in the Six Nations Indian Lands. This is an area of many good memories for me. Thirty minutes later, we were parking at our destination. Not a bad drive at all. We passed the time with the stories I shared. Time seemed to just fly by. We went into the event and were directed to our vendor's table and... As we walked back to the truck to gather our supplies, I had that familiar feeling in my gut. You know the feeling you get, that sort of uneasy sensation when something was about to happen and you couldn't quite put your finger on it? Well, that's what I was feeling, and unbeknownst to me, my life was about to change dramatically.